play my oh, hand. Oh, jeez. me. Rent got too expensive, had to leave LA. So I got into my car and I went away to the big estate. Playing poker every day. Going all in with these fish like I'm mad and all you can eat buffet. Leaving Lubbock, we head west towards El Paso. We enter into New Mexico to the town of Hobbs and stop into a local Mexican grocery store with some insane bakery items. But that's not what we came for. We grabbed three homemade tacos and hit the road. We pass through the Guadalupe Mountains National Park and then arrive in El Paso where we've got more food on our mind. It's been almost three months since I began this road trip. And last time I was in El Paso, Julio put me onto the best soup I've had in my life. Of course, we come full circle and get it again. We'd head over to House of Kings and into the 1-2 game for $500. First hand of the night, I look down at Ace-10 of hearts from the button. The low jack raises it up to $12 and the cutoff puts in the call. Action's on me. I'm coming in for a 3-bet. $40 is the price of poker and both the low jack and the cutoff both find a call. So we're going three ways to a flop which gives us a gutter to Broadway. Queen, Jack-8 with one heart. Low jack checks. The cutoff checks over to me. A multi-way pot is what we find ourselves in. Do I go for the C-bet or do I check behind with my gutter and an overcard? I like to go for a bet and it's a sizable one at that. $168 all in into the middle. I cover both players. The cutoff only has around $60 left in his stack at this point he finds a fold the low jack finds a call and we're off to a run out turn comes the six of spades river comes the ten of hearts not exactly the run out we hope for but we do have some shutdown value with a pair Unfortunately though, the low jack shows queen nine of hearts and he's gonna take down that $459 pot. We're down $210 early in the session. Top up for $200 more. I look down at five deuce of diamonds from the big blind. The $5 button straddles on and the action's on me. I'm playing weird and playing funky. The road trip's coming to an end and I pop it up to $10. Middle position and the button both find a call and we're off to a flop which gives us the nuts. Ace, three, four, bang, we flop a straight. Three red pot and I have the nuts. I bet up for $10 and both players find a call. So we're off to the turn hoping it doesn't pair the board, which it does. It comes with three of spades. Now we don't have the nuts anymore, although we do have a pretty strong hand. I start with a check. Middle position now decides to take up the betting lead and bets into the field for $20. The button's not scared. He doesn't just call the 20 though. He pops it up to $60 and the action's back over to me. If the button decided to fold to the $20 middle position bet, I was going to do the same thing, probably make it $75. But when he goes for the raise now to 60, what does he have here? Don't really expect him to be doing this with a strong ace. He could have a three in his hand. He could have pocket fours. He could have ace three, something of that nature. I decide to put in the call here. Considering I beat some of those hands, middle position gets out of the way and we're heads up out of position to a river. 203 in the pot and the river comes a jack of clubs, a pretty big brick. Action's on me and I bet out for $20. It may look like a blocking bet. I'm hoping he raises so I can just snap call him. $20 into 200, a 10% river bet. Who's doing that these days? But sure enough, it gets the job done. The button raises it up to $100. Does he think I'm weak or does he have a very strong hand? Well, I'm not going to be folding after I make that funny play. I make a snap call and he turns over three deuce of hearts. I turn over the straight and we're going to take down that $400 pot. Drop a comment if you guys think I missed out on value by not going for the raise on the river. I'm just not too sure what hands other than a specific hand like this deuce three of hearts would call us on the river that we don't beat. Either way though, we're finally back in the green up $20 on the session. Next hand, pocket fours from the cutoff. $10 button straddle is on. One call over to me and I pop it up to $40. Why? I have a good hand like fours. Want to build the pot. If we hit a four on the flop or turn, we're going to win a large one. John on the button finds a call and going heads up to the flop, which comes ace, queen, four. Bang, we flop bottom set. Exactly what I was hoping for. We unblock opponents from having ace, queen, ace, king, queen, jack. Hands that are going to cause for a street or two of bets. I bet out for $30, one third the size of the pot and John finds a call going heads up to the turn with $150 in it which comes the eight of clubs doesn't change anything again $150 in the middle and I bet out for $85 John quickly finds a fold which is unfortunate but we were looking to build a pot there if he has an ace jack ace 10 type hand he's definitely not folding unfortunately he didn't have one of those hands and we're up to $80 of profit on the session
left. Approaching 8 o'clock, we look down at Ace Queen offsuit from the hijack. Walker in middle position, who's a vlog watcher who said he went to House of Kings because of my first video I posted three months ago. Shout out to you, man. He pops it up to $12. Obviously, not going to be playing for $12. That's not enough money with a premium hand. I raise it up to $35 and he finds a call. Going heads up with a subscriber, which gives us a gutter to Broadway and a backdoor flush draw comes King 10 5 with two spades. Great board for us, so when he checks it over to me, I go for a C bet of $21. Snap call incoming from Walker, where heads up to the turn, which comes the eight of hearts. Doesn't improve our hand in the slightest. Walker checks it over to me with his pinky. Not sure what that means, but the action's on me. I decide to check behind. I could be going for a bet here, putting pressure on him, something to the tune of $90, but I'm looking to see what the river brings in, and it comes the four of spades. Hoping Walker checks it over to me so I can show it down with my ace high, but that's not what happens. He leads out for just under half pot for $50. Looks like a value bet. I muck my cards and he wants to make the video. Sure enough, you're going to do it. For the Queen 9 offsuit for the gutter on the flop. Betting there with the worst hand got me to fold. Nice hand walker and we try to make something happen here in this next hand. We look down at ace 10 from the cutoff. $700 in our stack. The $5 button is on. There's a few calls to me and I pop it up to $30. Only one player from under the gun puts in the call so going heads up to the flop. In position the flop comes 853 rainbow. Definitely a board that's going to connect with the under the gun calling range rather than my pre-flop raising range unless I had a pocket pair. But when he checks it over to me I just decide to go for a C bet of $25. When I bet here on the flop, I'm setting up a multi-street plan of betting turn and river if I get called. Just don't really think he's going to be too strong here other than some sets and maybe a two pair like 8-5. He puts in the call and we're heads up to the turn. 125 out there and the turn pairs the 8, it comes the 8 of spades, making it less likely he has pocket 8 or 8-5. He checks it over to me for a second time and now I want to implement that plan I had on the flop. 125 out there and I bet nearly all of it for 110. The player thinks about it for a while which is definitely concerning but ultimately he finds a fold exactly what I thought would happen putting pressure on the flop and turn making sense of a story and I turn over the 10 of spades indicating I had pocket tens or a flush draw either way though we take down that $125 pot next hand we look down at ace king from the small blind under the gun raises it up to 12 our buddy walker in the cutoff puts in the call I'm not going to be flat calling here I make it $40 both the opponents find a call, so we're going three ways to a flop. What would be an above average flop with ace king? Oh, I don't know, maybe ace, ace, king, bang, we flop a boat. On top of it, the house of kings right now has a progressive high hand. Not exactly sure how much is in it, but we're loving life. We flop a boat and I start with a check. Not really sure how to play a hand like this when you flop the essential nuts. So I start with a check and both other players do as well. Hoping for a card to peel off on the turn that improves one of them, which comes the eight of diamonds. Not going to be checking again. Again, I bet out for $45, looking to get value from one of the other opponents. Cutoff gets out of the way, and now Walker finds a call for $45. I'm loving life now. How could the river bring us down? Oh, I don't know if it comes the king of diamonds. Now we chop versus any ace. This is an absolute horrible river card, but at the same time, we block both the other hands we could be losing to, pocket aces or pocket kings. So for that reason, I rip it all in, looking for him to mystery to hand and fold a chop. That's not what he does, though. He puts in the call. That basically means he has an ace. Unfortunately for us, he shows ace jack offsuit. What the heck? Horrible river card here, and we're going to chop up that pot when we had an essential lock on it. Not even a jack could have saved him there. The only thing was another king, and it came. Oh, well, chopping it up with a subscriber, I guess it's not all bad news. And on top of it, we're going to get the progressive high hand for $100 to add to our stack. Life is good. We take a break to throw a few footballs with some other vlog watchers, and as you can see, I definitely was not an NFL prospect. After some fun off the table, we look down at our favorite hand, pocket sevens from late position. The $5 button straddles on in the small blind calls, and I pop it up to $20. My left finds a call, and the button does as well. We're going three ways to the flop, which comes queen, seven, deuce, bang, we flop a set of sevens. I told you guys, pocket sevens is the hand of the wolf. It won't let you down, and I lead out for $25. Looking to get called in at least one spot, and that's exactly what happens. The hijack finds a call and the other player gets out of the way. Heads up to the turn, which comes a six of diamonds. Puts a flush draw out there. We're not worried about that though. $132 in the middle and I'm going to make a chunky sized bet here. $90 is the bet and the actions on the hijack. Great news for us. The hijack slides out a stack of red chips. That's a call. 312 in the middle and the river comes the five of hearts. 3-4 now gets there. 8-9 does as well, but we're not going to be worried about that. We have a set of sevens. Unfortunately, the board did not fill 
fill up, but I slide out a good amount of chips. $135 is the price of poker. The hijack snap raises us up to $300, and the action's obviously back over to me. What is he representing here? 8-9 would make a lot of sense. Now that has a straight. 3-4 doesn't make too much sense. Diamond draws that brick. That could make some sense. Do I go for the raise here, or do I just put in the call? Thinking about it for a second, if I raise, what hands that would call do we still beat? Or is he just calling us with hands that are better than us, like straights or pocket queens? I think the only hands that we could bet here and get called by worse would be sets like deuces, fives, or six. Not exactly sure how fives or six would get there, but pocket deuces make a lot of sense. Other than that, I think it's going to be a lot of eight, nine, and three, four. Hands that have us beat along with pocket queen, so I like to go for the call. The hijack turns over pocket deuces, one of the hands we probably could have got value from for another raise like $600. Oh well though, we're happy to scoop that $912 pot. Pause this video real quick and drop a comment down below if you guys think I played that hand find on the river, or if I should have gone for a little bit more value. I'm on the fence right now, maybe I could have gone for a raise there seeing his hand, but that might just be results orientated. Speaking of results orientated, we're up $500 on the session, and we're trending in the right direction we look down at ace queen offsuit from the big blind the under the gun straddle is on two calls over to me it's a call happy game i'm gonna raise it up to 25 dollars only the middle position finds a call so we're going heads up to the flop flops advantageous for us it comes queen five eight rainbow top pair top kicker as jamie gold would say is pretty great so i bet out for 21 dollars middle positions find something great about this hand as well and he finds a call and we see the nine of spades on the turn 10 jack now makes a straight that was a gutter on the flop but no worries for me i'm betting out for $70. If he has a better hand, he's going to have to let us know. He doesn't go for the raise, but instead he finds a call, which doesn't set off too many alarm bells in my head. I'm expecting to be good here, and the river comes the king of spades. This is a hand, though, that could worry us. King queen is definitely a hand that would call two streets. Additionally, hands that pick up equity with a spade flush on the turn now get there on the river. Not exactly the best card. However, I do have the queen of spades in my hand. I elect to go for a check here on the river. The opponent now bets out for $110 into the $237 pot. If he had a hand like King Queen, he'd definitely bet here. The spade draws would bet as well. It's just really hard to find hands here that are betting as a bluff. Considering they called me on the flop in turn, all the bluffs pretty much get there. So I hem and haw, and even though we do have a very strong hand and we played it pretty passively on the river, I elect to go for the fold. Folding my ace queen, which was a pair of queens. The opponent is nice enough to show a six of clubs though. Interesting card to show. Does he have six, seven? Because obviously he can't have the flush. I guess we'll never know and we're up stuck down to $385 of profit on the session. A battle here in this session. We have a thousand dollars in our stack, and I look down at six eight of spades from middle position. Sleepy Willie, yes, that's his nickname here in El Paso. Sleepy Willie puts in the limp, and I raise it up to fifteen dollars. Getting three calls is nothing new to us. We go four ways to the flop, which comes king jack eight. We flop bottom pair. The action checks around, so we pick it up on the turn, which gives us two pair. It comes a six of hearts. Sleepy Willie wakes up from his slumber and bets out for forty dollars. Obviously, I'm not folding. Could I be raising here? Sure, I think there's merit to raise getting value from queen 10, some diamond draws, maybe seven, nine, things of that nature. However, I find a call and we're off to the river, which comes the deuce of spades, a pretty big brick and the actions on Willie. He starts with a check. When he bets the turn and gets called, now going for a check, I need to go for value targeting any jacks or kings in his range. I bet out for $60. Expecting to get a lot of folds and then a little bit of calls, not really expecting to get raised here pretty much ever. So when he pops it up to $200 and check raises me on the river, alarm bells are are going off in my head. Definitely a strange line, one that players in low limit poker don't really seem to take too often. However, two pairs are pretty good hand. A lot of draws miss, like the diamonds, the queen tens, that type of stuff, and it's only $140 more to me. And with a nickname like Sleepy Willie, if he has a good hand, I'm happy to pay him off here. A local reg in El Paso, I put in the call. The opponent turns over queen jack, turning his pair of jacks into a bluff. Probably just better to call that there, Sleepy Willie. Oh well, we're rewarded with our great call there on the river with two pair, $540 now coming our way. Up to $1,300 in the session, I look down at the ducks, quack quack, the deuces from the hijack, few limps to me and I put in the limp as well. The player to my left who's a vlog watcher raises it up to $15. The small blind, big blind, and myself all find a call. I'm looking to flop another set here in El Paso. $60 in the pot and the flop comes queen five deuce. 
bang, we flop bottom set. What did you expect? Absolute sun run here in El Paso. I'm up to $1,300 in a 1-2 game, and the cutoff makes our life even better by betting out for $28. The big blind finds a call. I'm going for a check raise here. A lot of hands to get value from. Ace-3, Ace-4 both have gutters. Additionally, there's a diamond draw out there, and I don't have the deuce of diamonds in my hand. I also want to build the size of the pot if someone has a hand like King Queen or Ace Queen. No way they're folding to a check raise here on the flop. I make it a fair price of $75. Cutoff gets out of the way, which is unfortunate. I was hoping for him to have strong queens in his range. Big blind folds as well. How did he not have a flush draw? Oh well though, bottom set is worthy of a $60 pot. We're up to $700 worth of profit on the session. For worked with pocket deuces, let's see if it worked with ace jack of hearts. I raise it up to $15 and the player to my left who's been battling with me all night, he three bets me to $40. I think my hand is too strong to fold and too weak to go for a four bet. So I stick in the additional $25 and we're heads up out of position to a flop, which comes ace five seven. Not only do we have top pair, we have the nut flush draw as well i decided to check and the hijack checks behind which is definitely strange definitely a board he should be representing all the strong aces in his range nevertheless he checks behind and that brings a three of spades on the turn when he checks behind on the flop don't want him to do it again i have a strong pair and a strong draw so i lead out for 45 dollars interestingly enough though he snap calls me on the turns we're off to the river not really sure if i need a heart or not it doesn't come though, it's a red six of diamonds, $173 in the pot. Do you guys go for the check call here or do you just lead out looking to get a little bit of thin value from kings and queens? That's what I decide to do. Ace jack is too strong to check. $50 goes into the middle and he throws in one red chip indicating a call. I turn over my ace jack of hearts. When I don't get raised, I think I'm probably going to be good here a large portion of the time. Unfortunately though, his snap call was pretty strong. He turns over ace queen offsuit and he's going to take it down with a better kicker. But that was a bang flop though. See my heart? That was a super bang. Interesting check back on the flop, but it got him paid for two more streets of value, so nice hand, sir. Quick flashback to the last time I was in El Paso. I was playing the 2-5 game, and a local reg named Mori was getting his chest rub in definitely a strange and suspect way. Is this a wraparound? Is this a reach down? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. What the heck is going on with this opponent next to me? You guys loved it in the comments, and some thought it was a little weird. So, of course, coming full circle here, I'm back in El Paso. I had to get my chest rubbed as well. And let me tell you, it's definitely one of a kind if you're in the area get the famous chest rub here at house of kings you won't be disappointed it's approaching one in the morning it's getting late i look down at ace king offsuit and i raise it up to 40 dollars over the 10 dollars straddle pretty standard so far and a player that goes by the name of john from the block puts in the call from the big blind all right john from the block let's see what you got we're off to a flop which comes queen jack seven with two diamonds 93 dollars in the middle and i'm gonna go for a c bet even though i didn't flop a pair i it out for thirty dollars. I have a gutter to the straight. I have two over cards, and John from the block is playing some street gangster poker here. He puts in the call, and we're off to the turn. Doesn't improve our hand in the slightest. It comes a three of spades. Three of spades doesn't change too much. There's some straight draws out there. There's some flush draws out there. I just have ace high when it comes down to it, but I'm gonna battle with John here, and I bet out for a hundred and seventy-five dollars over betting the pot. Why? When I raise it up to $40 over the $10 straddle and he just finds a call, he's never going to have queens or jacks. I'm going to have those strong hands. If he does have a strong hand, it's going to be something like pocket sevens or ace queen, king, queen. Although I do block king, queen having the king of spades in my hand. Therefore, I like my 175 bet here on the turn. Additionally, in his mind, I have a strong hand. But if he finds a call here on the turn, he could think I'm going to put in a large river bet. And that might not be something he wants to face. After a lot of hemming and hawing, John from the block says fold. He asked me to show my cards but since he's a vlog watcher i figure i'll get an extra view out of him later on and then we get into a funny exchange roll the clip Watch we're mid massage and this guy goes into a, like a, a speech over here you I know. couldn't even show me oh he's wow. got to wait a whole month to watch this <laughs> a month one month wow you have to wait a whole month to, so to see like... the blow as you can see he had ace king offsuit as well we got him off a chop there with my bet on the turn i guess my 175 dollar over bet put some fear in his brain think I was going to rip it in on the river. Either way though, nice playing with you, John from the block, and I hope you finally get some closure a month and a half later from when we played this session. With that being said, we rack up our chips and head to the cage. I missed playing my oh, hand. Oh, jeez. He bluffed me. Oh, but I'm going to let him slide so it can, make, it, can make, it, can make, it can make the block. Mm.
Well, you guys, that wraps it up here from El Paso, House of Kings. Absolutely great action here. If you guys are in El Paso, definitely come check them out. One of the nicest card rooms I've been in on this trip. Got into the game for 500, topped up for $200 more, cashed out for $1,200, net profit of 500. Here's how we're doing on the road trip so far. Don't click out of this video just yet. The next ones are gonna be bangers. We're driving 11 hours tomorrow to meet up with Rampage Poker Ethan out in Vegas. Gonna be staying with him and playing a couple sessions together. So definitely subscribe if you wanna check out those videos. Turn on the bell notification, leave a comment down below. Good luck on the felt as always. Get in the back of this. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs> Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.